everyone. Welcome back to WebEx Partner Podcast, where we talk about Solutions Plus and our partners. This is your co-host, Taryn Montero. This is episode three, and we continue the conversation together with my WebEx co-host, Partha Sarathi Carr. Partha is a senior leader with over 17 years of experience in IT and startup incubation, and has been with Cisco for over eight years, currently leading the business solution and strategy for WebEx. Welcome, Partha. Great to have you as my co-host today. Thank you, Taryn. Thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, podcast. Great. Excited to have you. On episode three, joining us is David Landret. Dave, as friends and colleagues call him, is a seasoned sales leader with more than 20 years of experience and has worked with disruptive companies such as Session M, Parsable, Latiz, and is currently the head of Global Alliances at Augmenteer. And now join me as we talk with Dave. Thank you, Dave, for joining us. I hope you are doing well. Thank you, Partha. Thank you, Taryn. Really excited to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, a, a great conversation today. Great. So to start with, I just have a quick question for you. Uh, I know you still live in San Francisco, and now you, you moved to Idaho. Uh, what what make you do the do that change? As you are, a, I think you you are always in tech. So what do you make what you what do you think that you get more in Idaho than what you are not getting in San Francisco? Oh, that's a great question, and I don't know if I'm going to make friends, enemies, or a little bit of both. Certainly <laughs> in Idaho, you have to keep it quiet that you came from California. So our move was really driven by COVID. I'll admit that my wife, Laura, and I are both a little, have a bit of a wanderlust. We do like to test out new areas. But when COVID hit, um, we were experiencing living both in the city and out in the hills of Marin. And in the city, it became very dystopian. The streets were empty. Um, Nothing that you expected to happen was happening. And then out in Marin, it was very compressed, a lot of a lot of rules and regulations around where we could be. We weren't comfortable in either place. So my wife said, let's hop in a truck. We'll just go to Boise for a little while and hang out until all of this ends, whatever this was. Um, reality was we got here and we fell in love. Um, absolutely gorgeous city, the right size, great people. So we've built here and I don't know that we'll ever come back, Um, but we still travel quite a bit for business. Uh, Fortunately, Boise, because of HP having large facilities here, Albertsons, uh, Micron, there's a lot of good travel. So anyone that still has to hop on a plane, don't be afraid to come on out. Well, and I think uh, you also, uh, also get nice potatoes. Yes, yes, yes. If you like the (laughs) waffle fry, you have to come here. Cool, cool. So, uh, so just to, just to get into the business side of things, uh, I just want to ask a quick question on on regarding uh, how how you came to tech, specifically working with Augmenter and companies like Parsable, which are focused on workflows and digital workflow solution. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question, um, and. Honestly, when I started in this space, it was not necessarily for the same reason I stay today. So when I started thinking about like how we digitally enabled our workers, um, there was a very good friend of mine who was the CEO of Parsable. We'd worked together in past lives and we spent some time and I understood the vision through him. I uh, spent several years kind of bringing that to the industrial sector as we were seeing this, what they call the great resignation I, there was clear signs even 10 years ago that there were more workers leaving the market than coming in. And so companies were looking ways for ways to do more with less employees. They were looking for adaptive technologies, what we now call hybrid work, models where you could leverage experts from around the world to help somebody who's sitting in Des Moines, Iowa through technology such as WebEx. Um, and then with Augmenteer, where I am today, um, there was like a really heightened vision 
around that. We're what I would consider the second wave of connected work technologies. And there was much stronger focus on the variability of a worker. The fact that I'm going to be hiring millennials who are 20 and I've got workers who are 60 and I need to enable them each in different ways. And so we put a lot of work into how we could empower three and four generations of workers and uh, WebEx was a very strategic part of that, being able to think about the future of work and how our workflow engine could be personalized to every individual. And at any point along the way, somebody could work, jump into a WebEx session and be able to assist a worker to keep them safe and efficient. So uh, I'll hop down off my soapbox, but that's why I'm so excited about what we do. Yeah, and I completely agree with you and I understand the the notion of great resignation and making sure that your workers are uh, are well trained and they can come to the job and and deliver the way that other workers delivered before right so productivity can be consistent across the organization uh, even during the pandemic time right so I completely agree so let's let's go back to the beginning to of this story how, how did Augmenter and Cisco originally get together by the way. <laughs> We never yeah. met, but we have to tell to our listeners that we never met in person. Like we did all the engagement and everything all through video and collaboration. Uh, we never met, right? That's the, one, one, of the, one of the first partnership engagement that I ever done is completely virtual, never met in person. This is the first time I have done that. Uh, so I don't know how's your feeling, but I want to hear from you. How, what, what do you how, how do you think about your story about Augmenter and Cisco? Coming together. Yeah. Yep. Thank. That's a good question, Partha. Thank you. Yeah, I, I laugh about that. I when we talk about it internally, we talk it like about it as if we were set up by our parents to go out on a date. And in this case, our parents was a mutual partner who had the foresight um, to see what was going on through COVID. Again, we talked about the Great Resignation and signs years ago, but they saw the accelerated need to drive a hybrid workforce and felt that we could potentially be great partners together. So uh, after just a couple of interactions, that became really clear that there was huge potential here. And so we started working on integrations together to bring WebEx capabilities into the state of work, being able to be delivered at the point where workers were actually doing their tasks. Um, and yeah, you called out the fact that we did this entire uh, partnership. We created this relationship virtually. We'd never done that either. Um, so pretty, pretty exciting and compelling. But also, I think retrospectively, it's a case of us both eating our own dog food. Right? We're in a world where we're driving a collaborative and communicative world in a hybrid way where technology is like being consumed in the way that people actually do their work. So you and I use phones at home, whether we're reading a book or ordering something. So we should be able to leverage that same technology to foster a strong partnership. And we have. Cool. Uh, I, I like how you put together the whole story. Uh, and I believe uh, this is one of the great partnerships we work together and I work together with any of the technology companies uh, from Cisco uh, that that create changes and transform uh, the workforce and how they work. So as due to the pandemic, right, we have seen a lot of companies struggle during the pandemic time. Few have been able to shine. Um, so how you, how, like, how would you characterize our mentor's experience during the last 12 months? Yeah, so I do want to recognize that a lot of companies have been challenged through this time, and we certainly feel for their struggles, especially when we recognize that we've been fortunate enough to grow exponentially. Um, our business has grown three acts, both in, in terms of the people working with our organization, our scale globally, um, but that's all a direct byproduct of the challenges that our, our clients are going through. It, they're needing to do more with less. They, they've got less workers on any given day without COVID, but then when COVID hits, they don't know who's going to show up any day of the week and they need an 
a platform, they need a technology suite that allows them to adjust to that in real time. So that's that's really fostered our growth. Um, right? We've talked about the great resignation. Um, the hypotheses are that there's going to be over 2 million open job racks in the industrial sector. And so what's happened in the past year is not going away. We're going to keep seeing this need from industrial organizations to find a way to adapt to whoever shows up at work that day, who, who can get the job done for me. So the hybrid model is it's going strong and we are planning for that in everything that we do in the coming years. Yeah, I, I, again, when you when you're talking about the number two million jobs, that's a huge number, right? It's a huge number of people needs to come in and do their work. That means you are one of the key players who are enabling those workforce. So by saying that, what are the immediate things a mentor can do to keep its people and business safe, specifically from from the the trends that you are seeing in industry? Yeah, yeah. So it, we're going to talk about this a lot. Every study that you read tells you that the number one thing keeping executives up at night in industrial sectors is people. It's having enough people. It's having the right people. It's keeping the people that they do have safe. Right? So who's showing up today that can unload the truck? Who's showing up today that keeps my machines running or gets product out the door? Not having those are things that put any of those organizations at risk, risk of losing money, risk of going out of business. So in order to combat that, organizations are adopting, you hear a lot in, in our industry um, because we're dealing with industrial companies, this concept of autonomous maintenance. Pretty simply what that means is I want operators, I want people who aren't necessarily maintenance workers to be able to accomplish some of those tasks take that burden off. We're now hearing this concept of autonomous anything. And the idea there is I want any of my workers to in essence be a Swiss army knife. I want somebody who's not necessarily trained to do a given job to be able to be given a workflow unique to them that allow them to accomplish a task safely and efficiently, pulling in help through our WebEx partnership so that somebody across the world or that person who couldn't come in today because they were sick to collaborate and make sure a, do a job is done right, machines stay up and people stay safe. Well, so you are ultimately putting together a plan to drive, uh, drive business continuity capability in every organization. So if you want to give guidance to our listeners, any of our customers who who seeks to drive business continuity. How Augmenter or what stage strategies that you provide to those customers from Augmenter's point of view? Yeah, so drilling down on that concept again of autonomous anything, we, we think about enabling our, our clients and we do this through our personalized workflows, much like a football team and maybe the special teams group on a team. For anyone that doesn't know, those are the people that usually return punts, do kickoffs. Those are people on your team that can do more than one task. You slide them in. So based upon who shows up today, we've got the ability through our artificial intelligence layer to create a workflow unique to Dave or unique to Partha for the job we want him to do today that's going to assure that he can accomplish the task like my very best worker and can do it safely. Great. And, and now you mentioned football, right? So <laughs> I'd love to ask a question. I can't stop because just a few days ago, uh, we have Super Bowl. I want to know who you supported. Like, who you rounded for? Any, any preference yeah. there? So uh, I've, I've got an underdog complex, which is driven by 35 years of being a Miami Dolphins fan. They haven't had many good years, so... I don't get to root for them in the Super Bowl, so I always I always lean toward the company uh, toward the team that is less favored. So in this case, it was Cincinnati, um, and my my streak runs on. I, I I picked the team that didn't make it again, but next year. Yes, there's always a hope, right? There's always a chance. The next That's time right. we do better. And with that story, I want to go to move to the next story, which I really want to hear from you. But like, talk about 
talk about the story or like a few stories from Cisco sales or channels that the that, uh, that team that you that been embraced augmented the solution. Any any stories that you think that uh, that you should highlight here? Yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. So um, our our first uh, real client together was one of the world's largest auto manufacturers. For anyone that knows auto, you know that it's highly regulated um, because there's safety concerns and everything that goes into a vehicle. Very secretive because they don't want models getting out ahead of time. And they've got strong unions, which those three things together mean they're very unreceptive to change. Um, they like continuity in their business. Um, but in the case of this client, when they recognize the value of our, our technology together, I, I've got to applaud them for seeing that the future of work was changing, right? that there was an adaptive hybrid model to getting work done and leveraging you know, all of their resources. They were struggling like everyone to have enough people in, to have the right experts. And also um, there was a vision for how executives, leaders who were away from the facility could be part of decisions in helping the frontline workforce. So leveraging the workflows of Augmenteer and the strength of WebEx and WebEx space for collaboration portals Organizations saw huge productivity gains across their entire value chain, uh, not just internally, but even with their suppliers of uh, equipment and sub assemblies. This project uh, continues to scale up out across the world and it's kind of the shining light for us. This is what we look for in all of our partner relationships with Cisco companies that have the same vision. Um, yeah, so that's one that we're very proud of. Uh, having worked on together. Great. And again, as we love stories, and this is one of them. Uh, but when we say stories, uh, it's when we say stories, there's something where we start, right? And the story, there's a starting point. By saying that, what are the most common use cases? Have, have anyone come, anyone's become more like, like any prominent one, right? Uh, in the past year. Uh, that you can see, um, uh, or you can say in past year, we all embrace the hybrid work model, right? So the question is, what are the most common use cases? Have you, have any new ones become more prominent out of that from last uh, last year, specifically with hybrid work model that have been either been asked to you to build or work, or you might come across uh, from a customer's point of view, they're already using that model. Did you have seen any of them that been that might be interested uh, to be uh, to be shared with other people or the listeners that we have here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a great question. Um, and historically, a lot of the use cases that we would see were tied to maintenance because machines are complex. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, literally, and so being able to automate those processes of keeping assets up, hugely important in regulated industries where you've got to capture data that is going to go into auditable reports for FDA or other organizations is important. But what's trended since COVID and really accelerated um, after like since the inception, which is a positive predictor that it wasn't just because of COVID and it's going to go away, is this idea of like hybrid collaboration across your value chain. Uh, I touched on this a little bit with that automotive client, but we see this across all industries, oil and gas, uh, energy, manufacturing of generators, where the companies who are either manufacturing the the products or are being serviced by companies want to be able to virtually engage. I don't need to go out to an oil rig to, to inspect the work that a service provider is doing. I can do this collaboratively. I can do this in a space within WebEx and capture all of that rich content, that visual content inside of a work stream. So anchored to a job and that allows me to go back and refine my jobs. Uh, if I do an inspection and there's a, 
a problem that's continually happening, this goes back into my manufacturing process. I make a better product because of this ability to remotely collaborate and capture data that would never be there. Normally it would be, yeah, the pump was down and you don't know much. So it's this collaborative value chain wide uh, engagement model that we think is going to uh, exponentially increase the quality of products being made. Great. And thank you for sharing the use cases. Uh, like I, as, I, as I again talked about the early, at the beginning of the story, right? The question say, what kind of questions do you frequently ask or heard from businesses who are interested in getting started with Augmentia? Anything oh, wow. particular that really people should know about that that they should know, understand beforehand and then they can go forward. And like, you might come across like crazy ones, right? I'm, I don't know. You can tell me um, about that. So I, I don't know if I hear too many crazy ones, but the number one question or concern, I'll say, is that that like we want to do this. We know we need to get off paper, but our workers don't know technology, right? And to that, not to be confrontational, but I, I, my point of view is we're talking about tablets, we're talking about smartphones, we're talking about a pair of glasses or a laptop. I can talk to, a, a, bring me your 75 year old gray beard, a guy that looks just like me, um, and I can find his Facebook page with pictures he's sending to his grandkids. He knows how to use technology. Give me that that twenty year old woman who's just fresh out of school and wants to work in the facility. She's got mobile devices. She grew up with a phone in her hand. It's not that people are afraid of technology. They just don't want you pushing down on them your business process without allowing you to contrib contribute or recognize the variability of that worker. Right, the fact that I, as somebody who's been doing it for forty years, don't need the same rich content and context that a new worker does, right? And that new worker doesn't want to have to walk over to somebody next to them and ask for help and seem like they don't know what they're doing. They want to be able to reach out to a subject matter expert somewhere else across the world or even across the facility through a collaboration channel inside of the workflows. And those will drive adoption. They'll drive satisfaction. They'll drive employees to feel part of what's going on in the work and you'll solve so many of the problems that you're you're facing right now as an industrial organization so if i summarize this whole thing is that you are here to help organization to attract talents and retain talent because as you mentioned right the new the people who are passing out of the college they want to go and do the job in factory floors they really want technology they want to have that Technology. They they want to use the technology to do uh, the best job or productive enough to drive things and learn things fast enough. And I think as you are telling, augmented can help them help those organizations to attract talents and bring those talents in their workforce. Arthur, you're you're right on. And there's actually another piece to that story that's really important, right? The, the workforce wants the technology, they expect it, that's how they work. But for an organization, if you think that you've got a hundred job racks open and there aren't that many people with the right skills out there, you need to be able to increase the, the funnel. You need to increase the gene pool of candidates that are available to you. So if you can, through technology, deliver a workflow that recognizes me as a brand new employee or somebody who hasn't done X for three years, and then measure in real time how I'm doing or how Taryn is doing and give her the guided learning she needs, you've, you've just hired out of a, a candidate pool that wasn't there two months ago. So technology is hugely valuable to companies who are struggling to bring new people on board. Yeah, and this is a great message. People who are listening, who are facing great resignation. And this is how you can digitally transform the workplace and the workforce and bring your workforce to the hybrid world. So with that question, I, I, I like with that summary, I want to go to the next question is like, what next for Augmentor? And 
what did you like to see in the coming months for the partnership with Cisco? Yeah, yeah. Th thanks for that question, Partha. So uh, I'll be honest, if, like four years ago, our direction may not have been exactly where it is, but there is no doubt today that you know, the way of working is not going to change. The hybrid model is here to stay. And so we're fully investing in everything around the empowerment of a variable workforce, giving every worker exactly the tool to support them where they need it. Right? And with that, Cisco is an anchor part of the vision that we have, that industrial companies have. Um, so with that, we've, we've built these integrations together and we have a rock solid solution that's gonna only be enhanced. My ask is from, a, from the seller community perspective, if you're dealing with any company where workers are away from their desk and need support to do their jobs efficiently and collaborate with others, that we talk. Let's just have a conversation, strategize, and see if there's an opportunity to bring something meaningful to our clients. We've got the team here to support it, so so let's figure all of that out together. Great to hear that, and and, and I agree with the ask, and, and and the partnership that we are doing. It really it will really help us uh, with respect to the industries are changing in in different verticals, right? From manufacturing oil and gas and every other verticals where there's workforce who are in the front line working on their day jobs can use Augment here and Cisco's partnership to drive and define their hybrid workforce or workplace strat strategy. So I, I can, I also, I'll also call out to my Cisco friends and, and my channels that please work with Augment here and Cisco together to find how we can transform or digitally transform the workforce in different industry, not only the not only in offices, but also in the front line side. So with, with that, let's talk about what will be the augmenter's role with respect to the future of work for all industrial workforce. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think playing off of the last question, we are 1000% confident that the future of work is an adaptive hybrid model that incorporates the technologies you live, live and use in your daily life being brought into work. Um, so we are focusing all of our energy on creating that, that flexible work environment where I, as a worker, am given exactly what I need to do my job, nothing more, but exactly the tools and exactly the intermediary technologies, including WebEx, right where I need them so that I can be as efficient as the very best worker on the shop floor that day. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's cool that like the vision that you are setting or you're setting up for yourself and, and, and to make that vision to be part of the journey that every industry could take or will take at some point uh, in the future of work and workforce and driving transformation uh, in their in their frontline as well as knowledge worker side, right? So I I, I think uh, I think the partnership between Cisco and Augmenter will highlight the benefits of how hybrid work can be implemented uh, with respect to future of work in any industry. Uh, in their core line of business workforce. So with that, I, I think our listeners will be interested to know more about you and uh, how they should connect with you. Is they ready to connect with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks for that question. We are one of the ways that you can connect with us. We are on Sales Connect. Uh, so we are a certified partner. We're not going to be hard to find either as Augmenteer, and we are the sole connected worker solution on the platform. You can also uh, look for Augmenteer on our web. Go to our website. Go to our LinkedIn page. Go to our Facebook page. Uh, Partha, I hope you don't mind, but I'll also put out there that anyone on the seller teams can reach out to you to get in touch with us. I know that happens quite regularly, so. 
Um, I think that's a great way as well. And um, yeah, th those should cover it. The, the net is, Partha, not to speak for you, but I know you are, you've are you got a very busy day. You didn't invest your time just to talk to me. We both believe that our companies are better together and we're better for our clients. So anyone out there on the selling and partner teams who thinks there's an opportunity to bring more value to your clients, uh, let's have a conversation. Yes. Um, and when things when things go better, uh, we can we can go and have a coffee together at some point, like uh, at some place we can meet in person, right? So that's the that's the kind of life we are always going to go back to uh, because we are still in some certain restrictions in certain countries. Uh, but by saying that, uh, I, I I always find Augmentia to be one of the key partners in 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 industrial workforce digitization and and hybrid work in industry in different verticals and and as you mentioned you are you are part of cisco's solution plus program you are part of cisco gps so cisco sellers and channel partners can use the products from augmented to be directly sold through cisco and our customers can buy the products and 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 application for from uh that's augmented provide through Cisco. So that's already there. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to connect and good to collaborate together and, and, and solve problems for our customers. So I think we have, we have a like, lot of questions, a lot of serious questions, just to have a quick, uh, quick lighting, lightning thing or light, light the mood, right? We don't want to go every time serious ways and, and talk about serious problems and try to solve every problem. Uh, of every industry. So quick question to you uh, and, and and to you specifically as you're living in in Idaho. So what do you like, running versus hiking? Right? There are a lot of mountains there in Idaho, right? That is a, yeah, that's a great question and a sport that I never thought would enter my vocabulary or the, the equipment would never enter my garage is snowshoeing. Oh, cool. This, it's a, Great season for it. If you know how to hike, you know how to snowshoe. And um, yeah, it, it's been an amazing winter for it. So so I should I should forward you an invite to come to Canada. So we can we can go for show, snowshoeing together. Uh, um, we do get I'll, a lot of snow, by the way. I'll meet you at the cottage for sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, quick, one more question that I have is that if, if like favorite band, right? I know everybody loves music. So what, what do you like? Yes. So nobody get jealous out there, please. But favorite band is also the first band I ever saw, Queen at Madison Square Garden in 1981. Uh, most amazing show of my life. Freddie Mercury comes out on uh, Darth Vader's shoulders. Darth Vader trips on a cable intentionally. Freddie Mercury goes through the air, tuck and rolls, breaks up off the floor into We Are the Champion. Oh, wow. That's quite a, like, I, I'm just kind of visualizing it right? as you're telling the story, like yeah. it would be, be a very different moment for you at that time, right? Uh, and I think that's how you remember it. Cool. Uh, on, yeah. on, a, on, a, on, a, on a little serious note, I know that you are, you are, you, are in, you, you do volunteer work. I want to ask a question, and I do ask this question to everyone that I met, specifically who who do and um, who do go and do volunteer work. What do you make? What is the like? If somebody is somebody asking you to do it, or it's it's coming from inside, what what your what your core goal to do volunteer work? At the end of the day, what your what is the outcome that you want from doing a volunteer work? Wow! 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 That's a really Deep question. I love it. So um, some people know this about me. Some don't. I was a very competitive athlete in my youth. Uh, I had the fortune of training. Uh, I was a runner under this gentleman, Joe Vigil, who was arguably the best coach in the world, created, it developed the most Olympic athletes. I had a motorcycle accident without getting into the gory details. I was not going to be in the Olympics. I, I had the trials a, a month and a half after that accident, if I could have run. 
uh, and probably would never run in the Olympics ever in my life. I, I was very down, um, just it, it wallowing in my own pity. And Joe, who is very, like, he's not a hugger. He, he, he hugs you with fact. He said, look, you can, you can dwell on this and who knows what it's going to do your life, or you can leverage the gifts you're given to enrich others. And I promise you, when you look back in 10, 20, 30 years, if you adopt this mindset, you're going to be happy about who you are. Um, and he's look, Ed, just to get started, I am not going to be with us forever. And he was the father of science-based running. He said, be my apprentice for three or four years, learn everything I know that you don't know yet, and take that out to the masses. And so my first real passion around giving back was working with youth athletes. I oversaw um, all of the Pacific Northwest Junior Olympic athletes. Um, but from there, I took anything I had a passion for learning and believed I should give it back. So working with Habitat for Humanity, mentoring young business leaders, uh, being advisor to tech, tech companies. I just have that same philosophy that I've only got so much time here and nothing that I know should die with me. Wow. Well, what a touching story. And uh, I think every listener heard about that and uh, listened to the, the way how you think about giving back to the community, giving back to the people think that they are that they want something and they can get something from you and they can use that knowledge specifically to grow big and better in their own journey of, of their life. Uh, and I, I think I, with, with the message that we are trying to deliver with, with our partnership, I think as a Cisco, we have, uh, we have, we encourage within our organization that we back to the communities. And I think as our partnership also have a similar goal that as a personal level, uh, we should also give back to communities and, and help uh, help others when they're in need. So with that, thank you again for sharing insights um, how Cisco sales teams and channel partners and customers could leverage this partnership and to maximize the benefits of Cisco. So thank you for your time, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Partha. Thank you, Taryn. Thank you to the entire Cisco family for being willing to bring us in and, and work together. We love the relationship and we look forward to great things in the coming year and beyond. That was the end of our conversation with Dave Landret. I hope you enjoyed this inspiring story and learning more about Augmentier. Next time, we'll get into more episodes with Solutions Plus. Subscribe to this podcast on our official WebEx YouTube page. And we really appreciate your help getting the word out and leaving a review. That's where we live. And you can find other great podcast episodes there too. Until next time, thanks for listening.